All right. First of all, how are you doing? How are you holding up? Um, I am in the great state of Texas. Yes, this is good. Thanks, Pickle. And we just had a live broadcast from Governor Abbott, and he was talking about, you know, like state of affairs. And we were really bracing ourselves for them to like shut down the state. Uh, but he didn't because a lot of Texas is still fine and no counties have no outbreaks. So they're kind of delegating it to local authorities. So you're good. I'm, you're great. Good. I'm so glad. So um, I've been kind of collecting notes all week because it was really an adjustment last week. My husband and I both are working from home right now. So um, coincidentally, and it's amazing, our sign shop, if you guys don't, <clears throat> for anyone who doesn't know, I run an Etsy shop. So I have a blog that I write on and, well, a couple of them. And then um, an Etsy shop, which is like one of our primary sources of income. And I paint signs, wood signs. My husband builds them on the weekend and I paint them like during normal life. And uh, Michigan's over at the, oh, well. And um, our sales have actually, I would say, actually gone up. And it's because Americans are freaking amazing. Well, half of them suck, right? And half of them are amazing or something like that. I don't even know. And there's like really supporting small business right now. So we're doing fine, but but um, my husband is in sales. And so he has a great job and we'll see how that, you know, like what's gonna happen if months go by without businesses really. But he's in a great industry for it. So we shall see. You're laughing at me telling people that they suck, aren't you, Robbie? I really think, I actually think most people are great. Like I'm one of those people, I'm not a skeptic. Um, you know, some people are like more skeptical of everyone. I'm kind of like, everyone's awesome. Like you have to kind of show me you stink for me to not think so. So I, den I generally think people are great. So Chris is trying to still sell things <laughs> from home and there's a lot of work going on there and he is in an industry that can kind of help during these times. So it's not dead. And then I am seeing an influx of sign orders and I'm needing to paint plus right and I have new um, new work going on in other areas so it's been really interesting because we have a five-year-old um, a five-year-old little girl who's been in preschool she'll start kindergarten in the fall and she is home with us so I now need to make sure she is kindergarten ready that's like like mama is now homeschooling like many of you and then um, on top of it she doesn't have a sibling to, to play with her so I'm I'm a big advocate of like she needs to learn how to entertain herself a little bit but there's also just this um, you know, it's a lot of alone time. She's used to playing with kids all the time, and so I'm sensitive to it. So we are trying to find a new normal, and um, we're gonna talk about that. I'm gonna tell you what went right this week, what went wrong, what we're doing that's working, what we're gonna try next week. I'm hoping I have some strategies to help you. I also have some things to share, like, um, with, well, I'll get there in a second. For, even if you're not dealing with trying to work at home with kids, I have some stuff for you. So I'm hoping to really provide value. And then um, at the very end, I have a super special giveaway. The story is totally precious. It's from one of those awesome people, the 50% that's awesome. Something really, really cool happened. So I will tell you about that at the end and then you can enter in the giveaway if you want to. It's for one of our signs. So I'll save that for the end right now. I just really want to <laughs> turn the pain of my last week into a blessing for your next week and hopefully, yay. Um, oh, oh wow, my family. I'm, I'm glad you guys are good, Rachel. Is stay home, be safe. Um, I should start sharing some of the places I've been finding to order online. Like I just ordered bread and I'm like, oh, thank you, Lord. It's like forced keto. And I'm like, no. Um, <laughs> now all the stores are wiped out of bread. I need, I need more toilet paper. Like I legitimately do. I don't need to hoard it. I literally need it for my rear end. Like this is a problem. So we're going to be figuring that out. But, um, it's been super entertaining. So my husband and I each had a meltdown day this past week where we got edgy and catty. Like we, we're not usually, usually our household's pretty peaceful only because we went through hell 10 years ago and had to grow a lot, right? And then um, my daughter who is five, she had, she birthed 15 babies this week. So that was fun. Um, she has a really interesting birth story style of this and she carries the baby hitched into her underwear for hours before she gives birth and then a couple of grunts and that sucker comes out and um i'm still looking for my name because it ain't gonna be grandma it just it's just been i mean like and i'd love to hear your stories like a craziness right when we all get together 
<laughs> Thanks, Ravi. I'm not sure how that'll work from Michigan, but oh my gosh. Oh, the, the school. That's funny. Um, so some of the people on here are my family, which is amazing. And Ravi works for a, uh, a university and she's like maintaining campus right now. Okay. So anyway, let's get into the thick of it. I want to give you guys some value. Um, and I think, I think I got some stuff. So first of all, I know like a lot of my stuff is going to be for families who are trying, like people who are trying to continue working from home while having one or more children there. But before I get into that, I really want to acknowledge an enormous group of people who's, who's, you know, in a slightly different situation, but in some ways maybe harder. You know, if you are lonely, if you've been devastated by like losing your job overnight, I mean... I was talking to my husband and just five or six years ago, there were times like there were years where we had $30 in our bank account and this would have just devastated us. Like, I don't know what we would have done. So if you are in a devastated place because of a job loss or no money or you're sick or you're grieving, I, I want to acknowledge you. If you're paralyzed by fear right now, this is just, you, you don't function well in a lot of, I'm just thinking about you. I'm also really thinking about people who, um, maybe have had an infertility journey, are, are maybe seeing all of these stories about us complaining about homeschooling our children. I'm not complaining, but I've seen plenty of posts. And I'm, I'm really identifying with the ache of someone who's just devastated that they've not had, they're not, they're not experiencing this time with their, with their babies at home because they haven't, haven't been able to have any yet. Um, I'm thinking of empty nesters who are totally just feeling isolated, um, people who are separated from family. I just, I really want to acknowledge you and that I know there's a lot of noise about what the rest of us are doing with our families and it's just got to add another layer of grief for you. So I wanted to throw a few ideas out if that's your story right now. Um, and this, these are actually for all of us, especially for you in that group I just listed. Find community. It helps so much right now to find some community online. I, I don't want you to just sit there feeling alone. Um, I did a little homework. So for example, a lot of us are already members of Facebook groups and um, there, there's a lot going on in those right now. Like there's a lot of chatting, there's a lot of sharing, there's a lot of support. Um, I, in January, I joined this incredible uh, like weight loss focused group and like the support over there is crazy. They, um, I would share it with you, but they're, they're closed right now, they'll open in April, but Put a comment in there if you want to know and I'll tell you. But like the, the support in there, it's been crazy. It's like they've made me laugh. They've given me strategies. We feel like we're in it together. Like we're not throwing away our goals in the midst of this. It's been great. But there's other groups that I'm in there are free, right? So um, if you are not in any groups yet or you want to find some support, go. Just, I think this is a little bit easier on, a, on like a laptop, but you could totally still do it on your phone or tablet. Go on a fa the Facebook app or the Facebook website, go into the groups section, and you can search in there. And I just did a little search for support groups. So many came up. And like, you could add something specific, right? You could say, um, you know, support groups for moms, or you just, you could search something more specific. Support group for um, singles, support group for, you know, 60 plus, whatever, whatever would more define your area, support groups for chronically ill, you will find groups in there. You may, I will tell you, just like dating, you may have to try a few. The first one doesn't always fit, but find some groups that you can be at least plugged into and feel connected. Um, another fun thing, if you haven't heard of the Marco Polo app, it is a free app and it's like a chat thing, but it's using video. So my sister's gonna mock me, just cue the comment about how I'm a fuddy-duddy. Um, Marco, I'm a Gen Xer, I'm 38. So my friends and I love Marco Polo because we're often too busy to like send a long text. And Marco Polo lets you send a video back and forth. So it's like a texting for video. Like make your friends get on there and send each other videos because that face-to-face is going to give you a little more community right now than just a text message. Marco Polo, it's the best. Um, oh, and then the other thing my husband threw in that I'd love to tell you guys about is on Friday, his, um, his work people, bosses, their team, they did a virtual happy hour. And they used um, 
Microsoft Teams, which is like a video thing. So all their faces are on the screen and everyone's drinking, you know, their drink or their water or their beer, whatever they wanted, whatever they, and they, they were just able to converse. And he came away from that being like, that was fun. And he said, you know, there were people saying I needed that. And actually Caroline could say something if she's still on here about like, I know she was on that call. I shouldn't assume she's not, she's probably not still on, but just you can do things like that like keep the normal things i was totally just thinking um hey isabel oh my gosh i've been thinking about you so much um so uh they did a happy hour and i think so like for example my mom has a book club and we're talking about canceling it i'm gonna tell her no let's do it on microsoft teams so we still have community do not isolate yourself and then um another thing that i wanted to throw out is this is a really great time if you're struggling in one of those areas of loneliness, devastation, fear, um, emptiness, and all of that. This is a time to really strengthen your identity in Christ. Um, it's a journey that I'm on right now. I posted about a book I've been reading. Anything Graham Cook is awesome. Um, I recommend Graham Cook. He also has a podcast. He's really good on identity. But I think this is the time for us to seek God like we've never sought him before about who he wants to be for us in this season. Um, he, uh, Graham Cook really, he, this is such a cool story. So back in the 90s, Microsoft Teams, checking it out, cool. Back in the 90s, um, Graham Cook, God said to him, I want, son, I want you to read 90, Psalm 91 and nothing else for like four months. Like, I don't want you to read a magazine. I don't want you to read another book. I don't want you to read any other part of the Bible. I want you to read Psalm 91. And um, Graham was like, what? You know, like that's a really long, and, and there were times when he was trying to even flip to other pages in the, in the Bible and like the Lord made his eyes go blurry, didn't want to read anything else. And, he, and the Lord said to him, I want you to become the embodiment of Psalm 91 because, you know, it's like our words are powerful, right? So if we speak the word of God over ourselves, there's like a, a renewing, a change that takes place. Um, and so for four months, Graham read this and, and became like just bulletproof. And what's really special about Psalm 91 is it specifically talks about times of plague um, within the Psalm and the comfort. And that if we if we learn to trust in the Lord, we know what he says about us, about, about us and about plagues. We believe it. We choose to believe it. Take him at his word. And then we, we apply it. We abide in him. It's like if we hide under the, in his shelter that we're going to be protected. So the more that we read it, the more we will believe it and let it become a part of us. And this will be a much easier season. What did Caroline say? The call was awesome. Oh, the, the, she's talking about the, um, the happy hour call. There were laughs and camaraderie that made everyone feel normal for, a, for an hour. Yeah, 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 yeah. So good. Um, okay, and then finally, for anyone who may be dealing with just like, really intense stress, loneliness, fear, anxiety, um, emptiness, devastation. I'm, I want to suggest to you there is an online counseling or therapy service that might be perfect for you right now when we can't leave our homes. It's an app called Talkspace, T-A-L-K-S-P-A-C-E, Talkspace. And you can create an account on there and you can actually, it kind of works like Uber for therapy. <laughs> and you can get on there and... Um, and be linked well up with a with like a mental health provider who can provide you with like counseling and help during this time. Also, um, I don't know if you've heard of Rachel Hollis. She's awesome. Um, she has a promo code Rise R I S E. So if you use Rise on Talkspace, you can get a discount. So um, just just don't sit in it. Like I I I want to offer tools. I want to offer hope. I want to offer suggestions. It's just another resource you can grab. And then finally, for all of us, I think a, this is a really good time to implement some mindfulness and meditation practices. It's a really good way, like something I can struggle with. I can get overwhelmed because my mind is filled with ideas and thoughts and I almost get like analysis paralysis, but it's from the perspective of like, I'm thinking, um, I should be, <laughs> my sister's texting me about that talk space thing. That's just funny. Um, that's hysterical. Um, mindfulness. Okay, so when I need to clear my mind, I can go onto a mindfulness app and do, you can do short ones, like three minutes, five minutes, or you can go and do a long one. I am telling you, I have been shocked at how much it will clear my mind um, in a good way and give me the space, the mental space to hear God's voice, to make a plan, to um, 
feel more calm. So I have two favorite, I have actually four favorite mindfulness apps, but the first two are faith-based. They are Christian. And so I like them a little better and here's why. Mindfulness can get a little tricky as a Christian because a lot of times they're trying to get you to empty your mind. And I think there's risk there. Um, I think that we should be taking captive every thought and making it obedient to Christ, not taking captive every thought and having an empty mind. So um, my favorite apps are Soul Time and, for mindfulness, and that is um, Danny Silk's app. You'll hear me talk about him later. He is spectacular um, in the uh, as, a, as a Christian leader. He's really good with relationships and healing and all of that. That app is spectacular. It's my favorite. I use it all the time. The other great Christian app is called Abide. And then if you do want to go secular, um, there's Calm and Headspace. And they are both great. I just want to make sure that if you're pulling any bad stuff out of your mind or you're clearing your mind, that then you have a follow-up where you refill with the Word of God. You want to refill with truth. You don't want to leave yourself open and empty. That's a whole podcast slash video of itself. Okay. So, quick sit, and then let's talk about how I manage a five-year-old all week. So, um, we really were trying to find a balance, my husband and myself, because we're both needing to work. We both have, need concentrated, quiet time to get things done. Um, I was trying to keep a balance of not losing my health, care, my health goals um, with weight loss. I was trying to make sure I kept my alone time because I'm an introvert. I know it doesn't seem like it. I'm just outgoing. I need alone time, quiet time to not be psycho. I'm trying to incorporate homeschooling for Lorelai so she is ready for kindergarten. I don't want her to have too much screen time. That's a priority. Um, and then at the same time, I do want her to have fun, but she's an only child, so there's no one to play with. Want to see what Rachel said here? Yeah. Um, so here are some things that we did this week that worked, and it was a work in progress. Um, it was kind of cumulative, so I'll give you some of those tools. Um, first of all, my husband and I would communicate every meeting, every evening. We wanted to have a powwow about the day, because what happens is you don't want things to compound, right? So we'd sit down and be like, all right, love, um, what worked? What didn't work? What do you need? Um, how did today go? You know, and kind of... Um, just a download, just like how did we feel? And then, you know, things that we tried today, should we keep them? Should we toss them? Should we do them again tomorrow? What new things do we want to try tomorrow if XYZ did not work? We're really trying to keep that communication open and stay connected because the stress, the more disconnected you are to the people around you, the more stress is going gonna, is gonna to raise. Um, and the more there will also be tension and disagreements. The other thing was um, we, we really tried to be quick to offer grace. So we both have times of short fuse, uh, frustration, just on being a little unusual, being off, and just trying to really, like, whereas part of what's made our marriage successful after a lot of problems early on has been holding each other accountable. Um, and uh, one, of our, one of the major themes of our household is we all strive to be fun to be with. We require our daughter to be fun to be with. We require each other to be fun to be with. In this time, we're giving each other extra space and extra grace, um, and then we're being quick to ask for help. You know, like, love, I gotta go for a walk. I'm on edge. I don't wanna yell. I don't wanna bite anyone's head off. I don't wanna make any bad choices. I'm, a, I, yeah, I'm just being quick to um, help each other out. The other thing that um, we actually did right away, but I noticed, on, I noticed online people talking both sides of this, we've maintained a schedule. So it was, you know, would have been very easy to kind of be like, okay, cool. Like, I mean, we're stressed. We're going to sleep in. Let's stay up and just decompress watching Netflix. We've actually maintained a schedule. So I'm still getting up at 5.30. Um, Chris gets up at 7 or 8, depending. Because he, he's actually working at night. I'll talk about that later. Um, and, you know, we're having our normal get up, our normal bedtime for us and for our daughter. We're having normal meal times. Of course, like a lot of America eating around the table, which is normal for us. Um... Okay, and then the other thing we are doing is my husband and I, since we both need to work, I would suggest this even for people who maybe one of you doesn't. Like, I think we need to split up the day. And for us, we're both working full time, so we're splitting it 50-50. So in the morning, I'm up early doing my um, my normal thing, and Chris keeps keep, is, is focused on watching Lorelai until 11 or 12, just kind of depending. And then I'll take her in the afternoon. Because the thing is, is we both need periods of time with no interruptions where we can just focus work. 
and that has really reduced the stress. It's not a free for all. It's like, no, we've got our orders. Uh, thank, yeah, Rob, it's, uh, maintaining a schedule has been awesome. <clears throat> okay, and then this is one of my favorite parenting tips. And this is one that I, when I tell, I'll, like someone will come to me months later and be like, oh, you're still in my head every time. So I wanna talk about a frustration tool. Um, as parents, we, we're gonna get frustrated with our kids. And, and sometimes it's gonna be because they did something just in that moment that is frustrating. And sometimes it's gonna build because we've had to ask them to do something too many times or they've been disobedient repeatedly or whatever. I personally think most of the time, now it's different. Like if my daughter came in here and like knocked over something and made a huge mess, like I understand why I'm getting a little bit frustrated at that point. I'm talking about when you're like, when, when for example, um, <laughs> this is just as perfect. I was taking a shower and um, needed, uh, I needed a new razor and I didn't want to get out and get water everywhere. So I'm calling for Lorelai, 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 calling for her and she's not coming. Um, and so actually perfect segue because I'm going to talk about this other tool. So all of a sudden we have a, a warning thing like you're about to get in trouble and we go, uh oh. So all of a sudden after saying, calling her like at least six times, I do uh oh and she comes running in. And I just wanted her to help me by giving me a razor um, in the shower. And um, when you have to repeat yourself that many times, we get frustrated, right? Or like I'm telling her, stop jumping around, stop jumping around, stop picking up the dogs and repeatedly. So I think... If we're getting frustrated in scenarios like that, it's because we've waited too long to set a boundary. So in our house, the, the, we use the uh-oh tool and we use room time. So when Lorelai is doing something, and it could be something like like last night, my husband and I were having a, it was like the one kind of um, more uh, intense conversation. It wasn't a fight or anything, but we were trying to come to a common ground on some things um, around what are our boundaries during coronavirus with people from the outside. We were not on the same page. And so Lorelai kept interrupting. So finally I go, uh-oh, and I say fun or room, meaning are you gonna be fun to be with, meaning stop interrupting, or do you need to go have some room time away so we can have this conversation? She will choose, she'll say, well, she'll always say fun. But then if she does it again, it's uh-oh, room time, and she has to go to her room and be a part. And I know she didn't do anything super, super bad. Um, <laughs> this is your, you're, you're, she keeps texting me. Um, she wasn't necessarily doing something bad, but she wasn't being fun to be with. And I'm trying to teach her that interrupting is not an option. And rather than giving her a spanking or doing something more intense, it's super guilt-free for me. It's not going to hurt her to go be a part while we have a conversation. Good, that, yeah, yeah, Rachel, you are so cool. Um, I feel like we would be friends if we lived nearby. Um, so we, so if you are getting frustrated, you should have set a boundary earlier. Like, if your kids are jumping around and you've asked them 17 times to stop, it should, like, I, here's my goal. I only ask once. You get one warning because here's the thing. If you're someone who counts to three, every single time your kid's going to need you to count to three because they know you don't really need it until three. So we're just stressing ourselves out. It's going to be the same scenario over and over again. So I don't do three. I go, uh-oh, she gets one warning. And, for, and to tell you the truth, if it's something she knows already she's not supposed to do, she sometimes doesn't get a warning. She just gets immediate room time. Um, like if she is too rough with one of like hits one of the animals or something like that, that's immediate room time. I don't give her an uh-oh because she knows from before that she shouldn't do it. If it's something she wouldn't really know or it's contextually like, you know, she shouldn't be interrupting conversations, but sometimes it's not as much of a problem as others, she might get a warning. So I think set boundaries early. Don't let yourself get frustrated. And the great thing about room time or we do a thinking spot sometimes where there's somewhere downstairs that's super boring that they have to go sit, you know, for however long. And by the way, if she's in her room, Throwing a fit, uh, that time is getting extended. She is not coming out until she's already demonstrated she is being fun and calm in the other room. And then she can try and come back and be fun and calm with us after some time. But I set a lot of boundaries. I do it for um, interruptions, being constantly interrupted when I've asked her not to. In fact, if I'm on the phone or we're having a conversation and my daughter wants to talk, she has to put her hand on us. And then we know she has something she wants to say, but she's not supposed to interrupt. Set boundaries. You don't have to feel guilty. You're not giving them a spanking. You're not taking something really, you know, special away. Sometimes that's necessary too. But like room time, it's just just as much to give you a break as to show them, um, you can't be around me if you act like that. I have boundaries. And I'm probably going too far into this, but that's okay. Uh, 
Oh, another thing. Okay. If your kid, um, for me, when Lorelai is, like, let's say she's had, like, four room times in an hour. Is that what you just said? <sighs> Um, if she's getting four, four room times in an hour, something's not right. This isn't just kid, a kid being a kid, learning how to behave herself. This is, um, something's not right in her heart. So like, let's say she's acting up, she's, you know, being disruptive or, or, or di disobeying. I will go look her in the eye. I'll grab her little face or her hands. I'll say, sweetheart, what do you need? This is a good thing to use with your spouse too, if something isn't right. And you have to be careful not to use any sarcasm with it. It needs to be, what do you need? Because if my daughter is repeatedly acting up and it's not normal for her, then I know something is off and she needs tenderness from me. Another room time isn't gonna fix it at four, you know what I mean? It's not just a readjustment of attitude, she needs something. And it's usually a snuggle or a snack or I really need some play time, you know, whatever it is. Um, that works so well. And I've learned that if my kid is going crazy and I've already tried like several courses of discipline, they need me to press into them. They need me to, to totally soften and embrace them. And, um, and what do you need? It's really, really powerful. Okay. Another tool. So my husband and I are splitting up the day, right? He's taking morning. I'm taking evening. Earlier this week, we learned my husband was getting so frustrated because he was still, he had so much work to do. He was needing to take some of that time when he's covering her and still get work done. And um, it was like constant interruptions. So we kind of came up with an idea that ended up working really well and we're gonna continue it this next week. When you are starting your segment of the day with your child or children, pour into them first. So I know you have a list of things to do, laundry, dishes, meal prep, actual work work yard work whatever it is I'm sure I know you have things when your time is starting pour into them first meaning one-on-one -on -one interaction um, it may vary right in our in our case our top daughter is five so we usually try to start with some play we play with her first um, or I do schoolwork with her first and read to her but I pour we pour in pour in and it can be anywhere, it can depend on the age and needs of the child, anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour or whatever, or if you want to split it up. Because what that does is it fills their love tank. Um, it fills their attention bank. And then later on, you have something to draw from. So um, the frustration comes when you're constantly getting interrupted and you feel guilty because you're not getting anything done, but you also haven't done anything with them. And they have so many needs and you're not meeting any of them. So if you fill them up first and... and and they all, they won't, often Lorelai isn't full. She's still asking more, but I don't feel guilty to say, hey, I told you up front, we were gonna play for 30 minutes, whatever it is, and then mommy needed to get some work done and you're gonna do X, Y, Z during that time. Um, I, I played with you, we had a wonderful time, and now it's time for me to work. Are you gonna be fun or do you need to go to your room? I don't feel guilty drawing on that tank of hers to, do my work because I poured in first. Whereas if I didn't, I'd be just flustered and the mind space wouldn't be there and I'd be talking more harshly to her. And then I set a boundary. If she's still interrupting me, she gets room time. Um, let me see what I was just saying. Oh my gosh, you're the sweetest thing. I'm so glad this is helpful. That was all, all I wanted. So make sure you set expectations at the beginning. It really does help a kid. We always did this at the park, right? When it was getting, we'd go, hey, more like 10 minutes until we need to go two minutes before we need to go. And then when we go, it doesn't feel like a wrenching to them. They're like, oh, okay, my ex, but like, actually Lorelai is really good about leaving, you know, where some kids will throw an absolute fit. And I know that's partly personality, but I also, we did that with my stepdaughters who they were two and four when I came into their lives. And they were always really good about leaving because the expectation, they knew what to get. Um, and then and then you need, to, you need to set those boundaries and you can do it without feeling guilty because you poured in first. Um, Okay, so I have a few other things. I talked with Chris, um, my husband, about this FaceTime and wanted to know his perspective because we see things differently, right? Men, women, just two different humans see things differently. And so he added a few things. Um, some of it's a little repetitive, but not, not totally. He found that a lot of interruptions during his work, um, which led to low productivity, really am amped up his anxiety. So when he started the pour-in, um, his anxiety went way down because he was seeing a major reduction in the in the interruptions. It helped a lot to set those boundaries. And then, um, so we do split the day, pour into her first, and then set boundaries when we need to work. Also, this is so cute. I had to share it. Um, 
so I always work from home. My husband usually works like downtown in San Antonio and then my daughter goes to uh, preschool. And so I eat leftovers for lunch almost every day. Like that's my life. But my husband working downtown, they typically go out. And he's like, you know, I'm surprised at how much it's reduced stress for me eating leftovers. He said, because a lot of times before, even though I'd eat some, like I, I really try to watch my portions. So um, we often threw things away. He's like, it's reducing my stress just not having things to throw away and not wasting. I thought that was so cute and probably for someone very insightful. I don't like to me, I eat them every day, like I said, but I thought that was really cute. And then also, oh, this was good. Um, so in the beginning, Chris was really uh, bucking this. He, uh, he again, ha has all this work he needs to do. He's learned to give himself grace on adjusting his, his schedule as necessary. So um, typically we, after dinner, we don't work uh, very much or, or or we stop by a certain time and then it's family time but he's giving himself grace to work in the evening um, because that's when it's quiet I'm taking over bedtime or whatever and he can go work and I'm typically I'm trying to go to sleep 10 10 30 so like if, I, if she's in bed at 9 9 30 I read for an hour and I pass out I fall asleep and he's he'll, he'll work until a little bit later and it's quiet it's sort of like I get my really quiet block early in the morning and he's getting his at night but He's just uh, found that giving himself grace to just let himself do what he needs to do and, and leaving that guilt behind. And then finally, um, this next week, there's a few things I'm going to try to implement. Not, not try. I hate the word try, but we're going we're gonna to test out. Um, my daughter at school, one of the strategies they would use in the, I think, once in the morning and once in the afternoon, after like a learning time, they would do something called centers where um, within the classroom there'd be different centers set up and the kids would be paired off in a little group and they would do some activity. And then they'd move to the next one after a block of time. So tomorrow I'm gonna try setting up a different center. So I'm gonna do my first time with Laura Leish. We're gonna have lunch. Then together we're going to do the learning time, you know, our, our letters, our numbers, our words, or whatever. Also fun thing, if your kid is young, um, we've been playing the game War to learn numbers because then I'll ask her every time which ones is the seven bigger or is the five bigger and she's having to start thinking about it's just a great fun way to strengthen numbers um so I'm gonna set up a different center in every room so she's kind of changing her location she'll do something in the family room then something in um, the office with me on the computer and then she'll do something in the living room and something in the kitchen and something in the playroom I'm gonna do different centers things like painting play-doh legos um, playing with her horses, whatever it is, I'm going to set different things and then every 20 minutes she rotates. And I'm hoping that will help during that time when I need to work so I'm not just putting her on the screen time. <laughs> My sister's saying, I'm going to play war with her. And then um, the other thing that I need to add this week that I was totally derelict, so I I do my, um, every morning when I wake up, I do my gra gra um, gratitude practice. I write out my goals. Um, I do my meal plan, I assess my like you know weight loss situation, and then I do I read my Bible. I read, I do devotions, that's like my morning. And my, my daughter was getting a lot of that at school. It's a Christian school, so she's getting a lot of Bible. And I was just like, oh my gosh, I totally, this week when I took over with her, I'm only thinking about the letters and numbers and stuff like that. So this week I really want to implement some kind of a devotional time with her. I'm not sure what that will look like yet, so I'll let you know. Um, but those are the two things I really want to try this week. I would love your suggestions in the comments. What's working for you? What have you learned this week? You know, whatever. So it is now time for our little giveaway. I'm so tickled. Like I was already planning on this video. And then when she, um, when this happened, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm totally going to do it at the end of this video. So as I mentioned at the beginning, I have an Etsy shop. We sell signs and I, I my husband builds them and I paint them. We have framed and reclaimed wood and new wood signs. And then I also have a blog and I do a lot of writing. And um, less so lately. Um, this precious woman ordered a sign the other day. It was a new wood sign um, that said, there's no place like home, and which is of course a bestseller. And she left in the comments, there's always like a note to seller section. She's like, Lizzie, um, a number of months ago, I was on Pinterest and I came across your blog. And there was a post that was, um, it's a prayer for wives to pray over their husbands every day. So she said, um, I found the post and I've been praying this prayer over my husband every day. And she said, our marriage has been having problems. So I've been really grateful for this, this thing. Um, what is it? Oh, okay. I can tell you. 
oh, I'd love to tell you guys about that. The weight loss um, is what's happening in the comments. Like, what is this weight loss thing? Actually, I do need to tell you guys um, with a major caveat. But anyway, so this precious woman, she's like, she says this in the, in the notes to seller section. And she goes, um, I don't need this sign. I just wanted to sew into you as a response to God for the work he's doing in my marriage. Please gift this sign to someone else who would need it or love it. This is by far one of the coolest things to ever happen in my business, and it's such a beautiful time watching people in America behave this way. I had someone else order a sign, and they ordered, like, an upgraded version of it, and they're like, I really want the, um, like, the, I don't actually want the upgrade. I just wanted to give you a little extra. And I'm like, you guys are precious. I'm super, super, super blessed by it, and people are just darling. I Anyway, so I... Um, I don't actually have an example of a there's no place like home sign, but I'm actually willing to work with you on the phrase. Um, we have a whole bunch, we have hundreds of them in the shop, but I'm happy to do a one line and you can choose the, um, the coloring, of the, you can choose what line you want and the lettering color. So this is an example, which is kind of, uh, it's going to be backwards. So um, it's an example of one of our signs. This one says, um, may your journey always lead you home. And it measures four, 40 inches long by... Um, six and a half inches tall. So um, whoever wins, I will work with them on what phrase they want and um, what color lettering. We do black, we do charcoal gray, we do espresso brown, we do taupe brown, we do navy blue, and you will get it totally free, shipped to you for free, just because this precious woman, can I just ask you, will you please, um, I don't want to expose her name, but just God will know who you're talking about. Will you please pray for her and her marriage? Let's pray for, Lord, we ask for breakthrough. We ask that you soften his heart. We ask that you give them um, a special new love for each other. We ask that you heal the wounds. We ask that you give them whatever resources we need. We ask you to bless them during this time. Draw their hearts closer to you in Jesus' name. So if you want to be entered into the giveaway, um, we have a week to do it. So I'm going to draw the, the winner. I'm going to put all of the entries into a hat on next Sunday, a week from today. And I will draw a name and I will get your details. I will paint it for you and ship it to you. And um, to enter it, just put a comment in the, in the comments here. And I would love to hear um, why it would lift your spirits. So just tell me if you want to assign why it would lift your spirits to have one. And I will enter you into the giveaway. So, super, super duper fun. And that's all, folks. I hope uh, hope some of this was helpful. It was such an interesting week. Um, as I found us strategizing and working together in our home, I'm like, other people have to be struggling with the same thing. I'd love to share some of these things that have worked. Let me know if you, oh, um, let me know if you want to keep hearing these kinds of updates. And then for those of you who are asking about the weight loss journey, so... That is really like its whole own thing. Um, before I tell you, so so this is so funny, okay? I have struggled with my weight since I was 12, maybe younger. Just always struggled. I've always been a clean plate club. I've always been a eat when I'm stressed. I've always been a, um, I've just always, oh, I feel like I've been trying to lose weight my entire life. And I've tried a lot of different things. I've tried the counting calories. I've tried the working out a lot. I've tried um, HCG shots. I've tried keto. I've tried Whole30. I've tried Atkins. I've tried it all. And I was almost always able to lose weight if I stuck with it. It was always effective. I could lose it. My problem was I couldn't keep it off because life would happen. Um, either old habits would come back. Stress would sort of trigger me into... Um, Going back to the old habits, um, I would get sick and get off my exercise routine. Whole 30 would end, and then what? At some point with keto, the problem is um, I right now I take blood pressure medication. Well, you eat a lot of meat, you eat keto, and it, it doesn't help your blood pressure. Not to mention, I personally think that the keto diet is probably not good long term. I think it's really good for losing weight quickly, but I don't think you can just not eat carbs the rest of your life. I think that's not healthy. Um, so I need to find something that I could maintain. And so I started searching on, on, um, podcasts. I was like looking for weight loss and I came across this one and this adorable hysterical woman was talking about how the, her weight loss system is the best for maintenance. So she's like, it's going to be slower, 
but you're, but my girls maintain. She lost a hundred pounds and kept it off for 15 years. And she was helping women do the same. And I'm like, you had me at maintain because that's my issue. I always hesitate because um, the the podcast is called um, um, Losing 100 Pounds with Corinne. Um, it's also called Fit and Fat, like P-H-I-T and um, P-H-A-T. I really struggled in the beginning because this woman cusses so much, it would make a sailor blush. And at first, I was like, I cannot do you because I don't, I don't like this. And I, as I sort of dug into that, I was like, um, so first of all, I looked for alternatives. I couldn't find anyone with a system as good as hers. So I was like, wow, God, do you, I mean, this usually, I'm so careful. Like, there's a lot I will not watch on TV. You can ask my family. There's a lot I will not read. There's a lot I will not listen to. I am such, I am vigilant about what I put in. And God was like, you, there's something for you to learn here. And I was like, well, yes, sir. I said, well, here's my problem. When I'm around someone who cusses a lot. And see, the thing is, if you really want to grow in an area, you have to listen over and over and over. You have to, like, it's why it's why we are supposed to read the Bible every day. It's, it's to renew your mind. So I'm trying to renew my mind in the weight loss area without becoming a freaking cusser, okay? Because I don't want to cuss. So my biggest fear, I'm actually one of those, um, I ditched the religious spirit years ago. I used to be so much about rules, so much about right and wrong. And I am still, don't get me wrong. Like I'm very, um, I have a very uh, high, con like my conscience, like I feel guilty really easily. I have a very sensitive conscience, but in terms of, um, other people, like, like, I'm sorry, but there's going to be cussers in heaven. Like that's not, the, that doesn't determine your ticket or not. Like, does God love it? No, I think he prefer that we not. The, the Bible is very clear about being careful what comes out of our mouth. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. But at the same time, can God use a cusser? Heck yeah. And so I'm just giving you that. If you are really sensitive to cussing, um, you do not want to, this woman will not work for you. If um, I've kind of gotten to this place where I'm okay if you do it, but I don't want to do it. So I st actually picked up a bad habit for like, like I had a couple things drop out for a few weeks and then I got more vigilant and then it stopped. And so I've like overcome and I actually saw that as a victory. I'm like, okay, you know what? Actually, if I can beat that even better. So, um, Corinne Crabtree, it's a spectacular podcast. She's got so much information. And then a couple times a year, she opens up her paid membership. It's like in the beginning you get access to, to her whole program. So she shares a lot for free, but it's like, not even the tip of the iceberg of what's actually available when you join her membership. So it's like a like a 300, 250 or $300 thing up front. Wouldn't be surprised if she went discounted on this April 1st opening because of coronavirus. And then it's like 40 something a month or 50 a month to stay in. But you get access to an enormous course on weight loss. You get access to her whole system. You get access to her daily journal, which I do every single day. Um, this one, you can, you can pay to to buy one from her, or you can just, she gives, as part of the membership, you get the download. Um, there are so many courses. There's personal accountability course. There's learning how to stop drinking course. There's improving family relationship course. There's dealing with stress. She's got all these, inner, like, it's so robust. She has three private member podcasts that you get access to when you join. She has a Facebook group, which has been a lifeline. Um, there's a lot. I could tell you more. I'm, I'm talking too much. But uh, that's the weight loss thing. I started on um, January 1st. I am down 14 pounds, um, which is a little bit slower than I'd normally lose, but I can, I can do this for the rest of my life. The way that I'm eating right now, following her program, I can do this for the rest of my life. And that's how I'm going to be able to maintain. So it'll be slow losing. Um, but you know, the time's going to pass anyway. I don't feel deprived. She doesn't do any, she doesn't give you meal plans. It's not about counting calories. It's, and she will make you laugh. And she's a coach. She's intense. She's, she, you, she, she helps you deal with the underlying reasons why you overeat. She helps you clean up your thoughts. She, she helps you uh, adopt practices that you can maintain. So let me just see if there was anything else in here Ooh, that I need to respond to. Uh, maintain, yeah, Rob. Actually, Robbie, you would love her. You would love her. I think, I think we're good. I think we're good. So I can talk more about any of that at any time. Leave me in the comments anything you want to hear more about. Um, I will plan to let you guys know who wins the giveaway and I will be in touch. Let me know how it's going. Let me know what you need. Let me know what would help. 
I love you so much. We're going to get through this. It's going to be okay. And if you need prayer, you need strategies, you need to talk, you just hit me up in the DMs, okay? Mwah! Love you guys.